What's up lovely people, Marwan Gaming here and today I'm going to show you the Sun Wuka Wave of Light build using Focus and Restraint. Uh, this is a very quick guide, uh, just going through the gear quickly and then uh, there's a link below so you can watch a separate video on the, on the clear that I did. I'm not going to do a commentary or anything guys, you can just enjoy a little bit of mus uh, chill music while you're watching the 120. I'm just going to go through the gear, the cube, the, the gems and everything. There's another variant of this build by the way using uh, conventional elements and unity. This is the harder version of the two Sun Wuka builds that are the most popular builds right now. Um, I did test both of them on the PTR, slightly different versions because the PTR was so laggy that it was difficult to play. So let's just jump, jump straight into it. Um, this build uh, will use the Incense Torch of the Grand Temple in the cube. This is a two-handed weapon, so it needs to be in the cube. It reduces the spirit cost uh, reduction uh, for, for using Wave of Light by 50%, and it also gives you 550% multiplicative damage. So really, really good and uh, definitely uh, a must-have for this build to work. So uh, for the for the for the two other one-handed weapons, you get the Kyoshira's Blade. Uh, basically, uh, gives you uh, while you have more than three enemies you'll deal 150% multiplicative damage, and when you have less than three enemies, or three enemies, you'll get 250% multiplicative damage. So, especially on bosses, this weapon will shine. And uh, for the bonuses, uh, for, for the stats, I mean, don't look at my weapon here. Uh, for use low level and seasonal players, uh, just, I would say, go for, uh, go for uh, area damage, life per hit on one weapon and on your vengeful wind of course dexterity and then dexterity uh, area damage and cooldown on the other and then you can go a cooldown gem in hell and that's it if you get something like i do here then of course you can do the same as i did here i have two cooldown weapons and then i have uh, my resource cost reduction uh, gem in hell um, make sure that you get to uh, as close as possible to 250% uh, multiplicative damage on the multiplayer here. Um, make sure that you get as close as possible, that'll help and boost your damage, so keep that in mind. For your Vengeful Wind, uh, get 7 stacks, super important. Uh, like for each and every stack you get 1000% multiplicative damage if you read down on the 6 set, six, uh, set here. So, so super important to actually get 7 stacks. and. Uh, for the crudest boots, uh, this is basically gonna buff your uh, mystic ally and double the effect. You get one more mystic ally. Uh, mystic ally, uh, air ally, gives you four spirit per second and this will buff it to eight and also give it, uh, while you activate it, it will give you, give you 100 more spirit. So keep that in mind. Um, the stats, um, keep that in mind also, guys, that you can see that I have a lot of physical resist on my gear here, so think about that as well. Uh, to get as much physical resist as possible, that's really important. Uh, but in this case, if I could choose, I would not have physical resist here. I would have dexterity, vitality, all resist, wave of light, and pickup radius. Pickup radius is very under underestimated and uh, in many cases ignored, but it can help, especially when you want to pick up globes and also the pro uh, progress globes that you get from the elites when you kill them. So keep that in mind, it's not a worthless stat. Like everywhere I can have pickup radius, I'm just happy that it rolled it. So uh, obviously here you're not going to go pickup radius, you're going to go for the melee damage reduction. So anyways, physical resist, this is also a good example of some good boots. Armor would be better than movement speed here, but I'm happy with the boots I have. Um, for the pants, you can see that I've uh, I mean, this is just the perfect role. So if you get something like this, or with higher stats than I do, then that's really good. Um, you can also get life per life per kill, also good secondary stats uh, that you can have instead of pickup radius. For the belt, uh, something like I have here, uh, vital dex vitality, uh, attack speed, uh, and crit, physical. Um, I mean, I rolled away the dexterity into percent life. I think it gives me great value so uh, you don't have much percent life with this build which will make it very good actually if you can 
get a little bit of extra uh, percent life. So keep that in mind. Uh, for your chest, um, if you're playing on seasonal, which most of my viewers do, uh, and people that are watching my YouTube channel, um, in my opinion, go for dexterity, vitality, percent life, and then secondary resist, and if you're lucky, a bonus like ranged or damage uh, or melee damage reduction. Ranged damage reduction will um, let you survive easier against thunderstorm, uh, frozen pulse, uh, electrified stuff like that. Uh, but the more nasty ones that are molten, arcane beams, uh, frozen uh, can be annoying if you don't see it. Sometimes. Uh, it happens if it's very very crowded it's a lot of density you actually don't see the frozen and they stack up and just all of them stack up on you then you're dead uh, melee damage reduction reduces the damage of, of all those that I just mentioned frozen arcane uh, molten molten explosions grotesque explosions are also all melee damage um, grotesque explosions just so you know is physical damage as well so keep that in mind this uh, further reduces the damage that you will take from a grotesque explosion. But um, with this build, you will mostly no uh, notice the ranged, uh, ranged uh, attacks. So you don't have to worry so much about the melee attacks. Um, for the Spirit Stone, um, very straightforward here, guys. Um, I mean, it depends if you're playing on seasonal and non-seasonal, but uh, in this case, I'm gonna make this video for the seasonal players uh dexterity vitality crit and keep like try to keep that in mind you want all the multipliers that you can have with all your gear pieces to be as close as possible to the maximum like the spirit stone pintos pride your uh, kyoshiro's blade keep that in mind those you want to be as close as possible to the maximum so in this case 150 is the maximum here and also, I do have another Spirit Stone with Arcane Resist, which will give me a little bit of physical resist because of Harmony, my uh, uh, my passive. So I still went for the, for the option here because this one will reduce the time that I will be uh, controlled. So for example, if I have Nightmarish on me, Jailer, anything like that, this will reduce it. You can also get the stats like this, you can also get that stat point on amulet and rings. On rings, uh, not many more rings than focus and restraint can get uh, a secondary resistance like physical, lightning, fire, whatever you want, plus that extra reduces con uh, reduces duration of con control of controlling pairing effects. So keep that in mind. If you're lucky, you can get a ring with that stat, and that's GG. Really, really good if you actually get that. But so far, I haven't gotten one with uh, the, the great like damage stats that I have on this one and this one. So uh, I just uh, hope that it can happen someday. Um, anyways, this will also let your um, Wave of Light uh, be a ranged attack so you can get the most out of Zystone. So uh, really important. This is a must for the build. Uh, then we can go for the Amulet. Um, one thing I want to tell you guys is, uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to skipping any stats, if you don't get anything like I have here, uh, this took me a long time to get many seasons, and I see many people getting lucky on the season, and I'm uh, I'm so jealous sometimes. I'm not really jealous, but I just I just get a little bit tilted that uh, every season I play, I don't get any good amulets. This was actually given to me by a necromancer, so. Play with people, guys, even if it's not a monk. A necromancer will drop it sometimes. So uh, that was pretty funny, actually. But uh, if there's any stat that, that you want to skip here, that's the crit damage, not the crit chance. So if you don't get lucky and roll the same values that I do, fire, crit, crit, if there's any stat that you can skip, it's crit damage, not crit chance. Keep that in mind, guys. If you die on the boss and you lack crit chance, you will not reach 10 stacks quickly. It will take a long time, and that's much less damage than having the 100 crit here. Remember, you have, like, if I remove this, look at my crit. My crit damage is still really high, but not the crit, that, not the crit chance. And getting the stacks up on a single target, that's a nightmare. So keep that in mind, guys. 
super important to uh, to have crit chance everywhere you can have crit chance. This build is using Witching Hour and so does the CUE and Unity build. You will not be lacking crit, crit damage. Uh, for the people who has played the whole season, this will probably not be a problem. You will probably have a good amulet or a decent one at least. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. Um, for the Pindus Pride, Fire, Dexterity, Vitality, and Crit Chance, and then Physical Resist or any other resist. Uh, even melee damage or range damage reduction is good, but I would go for Physical Resist if I had the option to do so. Um, for your shoulders, just something like mine or dexterity uh, dexterity always rolls on them so you don't have to care about that same with all resist but the two other stats are random if it's going to be vitality if it's going to be resource cost reduction that's all random um, so uh, make sure you you get area damage on there and then resource cost reduction or cooldown depending on what you need for the gloves uh, i do not know the exact uh, breakpoints for this build guys sorry but I don't I've been asking around I haven't gotten any clear answer uh, from anyone when it comes to the breakpoint of attack speed uh, basically reaching an attack point uh, breakpoint for attack speed will let you deal much more more much more more uh, much much more damage to a boss or if you're stacking stricken for example it's really important uh, for necromancer to reach that uh, to, to go over two attacks per second but uh, for monk um, Honestly, guys, uh, dexterity, vital dexterity, crit, crit, area damage on gloves, really good. Uh, cooldown, crit, crit, area damage, good. Uh, resource cost reduction, crit, crit, uh, area damage, also good. So you don't have to have uh, the attack speed. This is actually the best gloves that I've gotten so far. So I didn't, I haven't gotten anything uh, that I've just mentioned. So this is the best one. Uh, in terms of rings. I do like to go for the damage value here since I don't have any percent damage on my my uh, weapons this buffs up my damage a lot so uh, average damage crit crit average damage crit crit uh, the rift itself is usually not difficult it's usually the boss that takes a little bit more time and this will definitely speed up the process for the boss gems in my case I'm using a resource cost reduction gem diamonds guys do not go for dexterity gems on this build Go for diamonds so you get that all resist buffed up um, for your cube incense torch of the grand temple spirit cards in my case since i'm using uh, pintos pride and ring of the royal, royal grandeur to get the six set for your skills uh, wave of light explosive light so far in my opinion by far the best wave of light some people say lightning do not believe them guys it lightning has no chance against the fire one the fire one will demolish the lightning uh, rune easily and uh, that's thanks to the extreme, like I'm hitting here and it's hitting here. Do you see that? That's actually dealing full damage right here as well. So keep that in mind. Those uh, beams like furthest away will will get the Zion Stone effect. So uh, keep that in mind. You will deal so much more damage with the with the fire uh, fire one. If you don't believe me, try it. It's not on the leaderboard. The lightning uh, build. Potentially has uh, like if if you get the absolute perfect rift, everything going well for you. The lightning build could deal more damage, but still, uh, I don't I don't think it ha it has a chance even with the perfect build, uh, perfect rift, because uh, the light uh, the fire build just hits more enemies and more enemies means more damage. So keep that in mind. If you choose, you can try the lightning build. I'm not stopping you, but. This is the best from what I've seen, and that's what I'm using. Rising Tide, this is super, super good. Um, the Crippling Wave Rising Tide, my friends. Um, you can see here, for every third hit, uh, also dazes enemies within 11 yards. That's quite huge, guys. And uh, not only is, there, is it slowing their movement speed, but it's slowing their attack speed, which means that the enemies are gonna attack slower combined uh, if your Templar is attacking uh, th those same enemies, you also get the 30% movement, movement speed slow and you also get 30% uh, attack speed slow from, uh, from the Thunder Fury. And this actually procs a lot in the Rift. So uh, he's hitting the enemies and it's going to proc and they're going to be slowed. 
and then they're going to be slowed with Pintos Pride. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. Um, so super good. Also, the more enemies you hit, uh, the more spirit, the, the quicker you actually re regen up your spirit. Uh, sweeping wind. This is basically just so that you uh, get, get your uh, that you get um, your uh, spirit up faster. So definitely a must for the build. Agility um, gives you not only toughness from uh, all the all the resistances, but also gives you dodge 35%. Then you get the blinding speed, which gives you 40% dodge, and mystic ally air ally to give you eight spirit per second with um, with your uh, what's it called with your uh, cruise boots so uh, super important to have the air ally here and also you uh, when you activate it you get uh, 200 spirit instead of 100 with the cruise boots and in terms of um, when it comes to your uh, your passives harmony must have um, like so much more so much more uh, uh, so much more uh, resistances from all of your uh, like resistance, uh, secondary resistance uh, items that you have with physical, so you do get arcane, arcane resist, and all the other resistances are buffed uh, when you use uh, harmony. The guardian's path to give you an additional thirty-five percent uh, dodge, seized initiative to give you uh, a hell lot more uh, attack speed, especially on the boss. Like at the first, like this, th that's why ad bosses are so good, guys. When the boss is over seventy-five percent. Uh, Saxtris, for example, she or he spawns um, spawns adds when that boss is under 75% health. Keep that in mind. So that's why ad bosses are really good for this build. Uh, except Perendi. Perendi is not good. Uh, then you have Sixth Sense. This build is very weak uh, without this uh, uh, without this uh, passive, like against Arcane and other nasty things like molten you die instantly if you don't use six sense so keep that in mind the gems i'm using is i stone of vengeance so the further you are away 50 percent uh 50 yards away then you you'll get the full bonus uh stricken and then uh bane of the trapped uh for the damage for the damage bonus that you get combined with pentos pride and then to stack stricken stricken and then we got the the, the templar and uh Enchantress. I usually use uh, Templar now for this build just because he gives me more spirit so he gives me 10% uh, more spirit generated and uh, he does have healing and he also has uh, regeneration and uh, then he has Onslaught. I don't really care about Onslaught but uh, yeah you need to use uh, the follower uh, item so that he cannot die and uh, then Thunder Fury, in my opinion, for this build, for Necromancer, uh, definitely, definitely not. Uh, you don't want anything that can uh, that can DR the, the the boss. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Weird Ward doesn't have so much effect in the Rift, but yeah, you can use it if you want to. Uh, Oculus, the most important thing for your follower. Keep that in mind, and you want eighty five percent on this one. Uh, just use. A lot of attack speed uh, and cooldown and uh, then you should get the healing uh, fairly often as well so when you get to a certain amount of HP he actually heals you so keep that in mind all right guys that's it for the video uh, we have a new like goal today and I would really appreciate it guys if you give me at least one like on this video uh, and thank you for watching let me know if you want me to do uh, a video on uh, like as like the more I play with the demon hunter build now the more I learn I played one day and we did clear um, I think it was three tiers Let's See here. I think I was uh, I was at greater 110 uh, 12 and We did get to 115 and we were so close on the 116 as well. I'm not a like I'm not uh, Not a good demon hunter or anything, but I'm learning so let me know well, I'm gonna push more and more with this build. I am using the Natalias and Marauders build, so six uh, uh, six set Natalias and four piece uh, Marauders. So you have three on you here, as you can see, and the rest is Natalias. It's a super fun build, and I'm enjoying it a lot, guys. Let me know if you want this in the future or any anything else. Leave any suggestions in the comment section below. 
I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, beautiful people.